channel welcome. As we commence our worship, let us remember that we are gathered on sacred ground. We acknowledge and pay our respects to the original owners and custodians of this land, our Aboriginal brothers and sisters of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. For years, they have cared for, nurtured and nourished this land. As we pray for our nation that burns seasonally, may their knowledge and deep spiritual connectedness to this land be a source of guidance as we journey into the future together. In the name of the maker who created fire, the name of Christ who suffers in fires, the name of the spirit who appeared as tongues of fire. Amen. Earth is filled with God's presence. Christ, we come into your presence today to worship in this sanctuary called Earth. Holy, holy, holy. Earth is filled with your presence. And we join together in the hymn, uh, Black Woods, the Bushfire Sunday hymn written by Norman Habel, and it's set to the tune of Amazing Grace. of leaf so we take a piece of eucalyptus in our hands crush the leaves and recall our experience of bushfires so take your eucalyptus leaf eucalyptus leaves sorry, 
crush them to release the scent and oil, and join us as we reflect on the bushfire experiences which commenced with Black Saturday and have extended over the years since. In the past, we knew the way of bushfires. We knew the speed of the fire and the time needed to prepare for the actual flames. We knew how to burn fire breaks to retard the fire. But with climate change, all these factors changed. Throughout the years, all the known patterns of a bushfire seem to have been transcended. Instead of, cluster of, instead of a cluster of eucalyptus trees engulfed in flames, imagine a tsunami, a wall of fire crashing through towns and leaving nothing in its wake. The intensity of the typical bushfire had changed. Instead of plumes of swirling smoke and burning leaves flying into the sky, imagine a tornado with massive walls of fire leaping over the entire valley and landing on houses on the opposite hillside. The height and force of the typical bushfire had changed. Instead of ferocious flames fanned by a hot north wind, imagine a hurricane like Katrina with temp temperatures of 45 degrees and blasts of over 195 kilometres an hour and fierce fires like open mouths consuming all in their path. The heat of the typical bushfire has changed. Instead of watching the horizon a few miles away and preparing to defend your home within the hour, imagine the balls of flame fed by eucalyptus oil are suddenly landing on your house with virtually no time to escape. The speed of the typical bushfire had changed. The infamous bushfires of past years were ferocious and most of Victoria was prepared for similar days. With climate change has come increased hot spells, decreased rainfalls and unfriendly weather patterns. The rise of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere has led to increased vegetation in the region, much of which is tinder dry in the days of an Australian summer. We are no longer prepared for disasters like these. On Black Saturday, 170 people were burned alive. More than 7,000 people were made homeless. Graham Mills from the Centre for Australian Weather and Climate Research is quoted in The Australian as saying, the conditions that lead to extreme fire weather are heat, low humidity, wind and drought. On that Saturday, the temperature set new records. When you get these conditions, Nobody has really had experience of them before. With Black Saturday, the paradigm of a typical bushfire changed. The fuel intensified and the classic bushfire scenario was superseded. We are now filled with the new doubts and new anxieties as we come before our God for a share. We invite the north wind to worship with us. When that wind whips up flames into a hurricane fire, do we and wonder why? We invite eucalyptus trees to join us in wonder. But when eucalyptus trees fuel the swirling balls of fire, that land on miles and miles, miles away, away, we weep and wonder why. We join with bushland creatures in praising God. When the scorched birds in the sky, while the Jesus sings, do we and wonder why? We call on forest families to celebrate. As we remember, Black bushfire days. Mm. And wonder why. 
let us confess our anxieties and doubts before our God. Lord, we wonder where you were when habitats were destroyed and the animals you created were burned alive. Lord, where were you when so many people suffered in these bushfires? Where were you when fireballs flew and landed on people's homes? Our Lord replies, Behold, my hands and my feet, the deep burns on my side. I was with you. I suffered with you. I am here to heal you. As we return to our environment, recovering from the burning and seek the green to return, Lord, in your grace, have mercy. Forgive us and strengthen us to be your partners in bringing peace to all burnt domains of creation. Amen. The fire of God, titanic spirit, burn within our hearts today. Do you know what that is? No. It's, uh, who, who, wow, we're getting lots of, lots of feedback here. Um, maybe, who of the adults know what a gobstopper is? Yeah, okay, there's a few. They're a great big, they look like a, I could say a Tom Bowler. No, no you don't. You know what that is? <laughs> A marble, good, yeah, well, a huge marble. So it's a big round lolly that if you had it in your 
cheek. Everyone would think that you've got an infection. But uh, one of my favourite lollies was a eucalyptus lolly. But that was dangerous to eat in school because if the teacher came close, they could smell it. Uh, we think about fires and bush and I guess one of the lessons that we learn when we go to out in the bush and particularly if we're going to have a barbecue, what do you think it might be? Um, I'm not sure. Don't play with matches. Okay? Don't play with matches. Uh, because things could go drastically wrong. Uh, but there's lots of stories about what happens in the bush. And here's one that we've got, which is just a little story that comes courtesy of the New South Wales Fire Authority. No, there should be a video before that. Skip that. If you do a Google search, you've got homework today. Okay, can you do that? If you uh, do a search for a story, and I'll send you the link. There we go. That's the best way. I tried to get this book that we could read with sort of uh, looking after country with fire. Uh, it's a story that's written by one of the uh, Aboriginal or Indigenous elders that tells us that their wisdom can help us in controlling bushfires. And I think it's one of the lessons that we second Australians need to learn from our first Australians. Maybe it's in your library. I tried three libraries and couldn't find it even though one library said it was still on the shelf. But it's a great book to read because it tells us how we can uh, look after country, listening to the wisdom of our first Australians. So lots of homework today, isn't there? Yeah. A book to read and uh, a video to watch. And uh, we can put that uh, video link in our news sheet for next week. Over the weeks we've been looking at our seasons of creation and uh, next Sunday we bring it to a conclusion with one which I think is a really good one. It's Rainbow Sunday. Like if today is a dark Sunday because of bushfires, there's something very, very hopeful about a rainbow. And if you've got photos of rainbows, please send them to Mandy. Maybe we could have a prayer. God, our creator, as we remember bushfires, we have a sense of compassion as well as doubt. Help us to see the deep, powerful forces you've planted in creation as wondrous and natural, but subject to change. Teach us also to recognise that we need to prepare our environment for bushfires and to reduce the ways of making such fires more violent than in the past. In the name of Christ, who reconciles and renews all things in creation, Amen. Our Bible readings this morning come from Acts and also from Matthew. The first Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through to 15. The coming of the Holy Spirit. When the day of Pentecost came, all the believers were gathered together in one place. Suddenly, there was a noise from the sky which sounded like a strong wind blowing. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. 
Then they saw what looked like tongues of fire which spread out and touched each person there. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to talk in other languages as the Spirit enabled them to speak. There were Jews living in Jerusalem, religious people who had come from every country in the world. When they heard this noise, a large crowd gathered. They were all excited because all of them heard the believers talking in their own languages. In amazement and wonder, they explained, these people who are talking like this are Galileans. How is it then that all of us hear them speaking in their own native languages? We're from Parthia, Media and Elam, from Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, from Pontus and Asia, from Phrygia and Pamphylia, from Egypt and the regions of Libya near Cyrene. Some of us are from Rome, both Jews and Gentiles converted to Judaism. And some of us are from Crete and Arabia. Yet all of us hear them speaking in our own languages about the great things that God has done. Amazed and confused, they kept asking each other, what does this mean? But others made fun of the believers saying, these people are drunk. Then Peter stood up with the other 11 apostles and in a loud voice began to speak to the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, listen to me and let me tell you what this means. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It is only nine o'clock in the morning. The second reading is from Matthew chapter 3, verses 1 through to 12, the preaching of John the Baptist. At that time, John the Baptist came to the desert of Judea and started preaching. Turn away from your sins, he said, because the kingdom of heaven is near. John was the man the prophet Isaiah was talking about when he said, Someone is shouting in the desert, prepare a road for the Lord, make a straight path for him to travel. John's clothes were made from camel's hair. He wore a leather belt around his waist and his food was locusts and wild honey. People came to him from Jerusalem, from the whole province of Judea and from all over the country near the Jordan River. They confessed their sins, and he baptised them in the Jordan. When John saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming to him to be baptised, he said to them, You snakes! You told, who told you that you could escape from the punishment God is about to send? Do those things that will show that you have turned from your sins. And don't think that you can escape punishment by saying that Abraham is your ancestor. I tell you that God can take these rocks and make descendants for Abraham. The axe is ready to cut down the trees at the roots. Every tree that does not bear good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water to show that you have repented. But the one who comes after me will baptise you with the Holy Spirit and fire. He is much greater than I am, and I am not good enough even to carry his sandals. He has his winnowing shovel with him to thresh out all the grain. He will gather his wheat into his barn, but he will burn the chaff in the fire that never goes out. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Be thankful that I'm not kicking the bucket, just kicking the branch as I come through. Uh, as we reflect on those readings this morning and think particularly about our Australian experience of bushfires, we discover that there is a focus upon fire which runs through scripture. We were to pick it up in the 
Old Testament, we would pick up uh, a story that comes uh, from uh, the uh, Exodus chapter 3, where God appears to Moses in a burning bush, and uh, he, in the desert, turns aside to see a bush that uh, is burning, but doesn't turn to ash. It had to be something to get his particular attention. Uh, we know what happens when I asked one of my friends if he would source these uh, branches for me. I asked for uh, green eucalyptus leaves and burnt leaves. Uh, he took sympathy on me and said, look, you can't have the burnt leaves, it would make too much of a mess in your car and in the church, so I'll give you some uh, dead branches uh, to cover that. So I'm thankful for that. We know what happens when you burn. You, you actually, uh, if you're burning off, you end up with ash. And in one way, that connects with the reading that we had from the Book of Acts where it appeared that there were tongues of fire that rested on the people. You see, in Exodus chapter 3, the bush that was on fire and wasn't consumed was an experience where God was there and what was normal was that you would expect the bush to burn. What happened on the day of Pentecost is that God's spirit comes and God personally comes and resides in people and they are not consumed. We are those who know the presence of God within our lives and it's reflected in that experience which John Wesley records in his journal where he says my heart was strangely warm so as we think of this that which we encounter in exodus chapter 3 that which we read about in acts chapter 2 and jesus speak and john speaks of in matthew chapter 3 we have that which gives to us a sense of, of God's presence with us in the times that we experience here in Australia and in other places around the world where the bush is on fire. What responses may we make as Christians? during these times of fire? Well, the first is to weep with those who are weeping and to mourn with those who mourn. If we can't start there and empathise with those who've lost much, then our opinion about the rest is little more than noise being played out of rhythm. So we need to do that. I've put together a little, uh, some slides which give to us a sense of what it might mean for us, and many of these were drawn from the archives of Crosslight, which you may recall uh, documented the fires of 2020. So if we can just scroll through them. Bush was on fire. The aftermath reminds us just how devastating it can be.
we can just pause for a moment. This one, partic this particular photo, gives to us a picture of our uniting church in Malakuta. And our churches, our synod, responded to the bushfires that devastated that particular area and seconded Reverend Ian Ferguson to assist during that time. Jenny Gordon was the minister at, uh, there at uh, Malakuta. We go to the next slide, which shows us on that experience. Here she is speaking to the people gathered on the, uh, the beach at Malakuta awaiting uh, extradition, uh, evacuation here to Melbourne. So we are those who would want to respond as best we can to uh, the bushfires. We need to have compassion. The second thing that we need to do is to avoid heated and at times rather disgusting politicisation of the events. It calls for compassion, not division. We also need to recognise that we are not experts in this whole area. And perhaps that's where we as second uh, uh, Australians need to listen to our first Australians who have been here for thousands of years before we came and have learnt how to deal with those events that uh, we uh, encounter and have contributed to. You know, uh, the strange thing is, about it is that when we talk about bushfires, we suddenly discover that there are 26 million experts on bushfires in Australia. Uh, everyone uh, can uh, become an expert. And you know the definition of an expert? X is the unknown quantity, a spurt is a drip under pressure. Uh, we need to keep that in mind sometimes when that happens. We need to be those who respond. And that was one of the good responses that our churches had to the bushfire appeal. Moderator had an emergency bushfire appeal that our churches responded to and the resources were distributed to the communities where it was most needed. We also need to be those who pray. I guess that that's one of the hard things to do very often. How do we respond to those kind of calamities that come? I was reminded this morning as I was driving up Penlink and uh, saw red and blue lights flashing from one of the entries onto the freeway. It was an ambulance. And uh, part of my spiritual discipline these days is that when I see an ambulance uh, either passing me or coming towards me, I pray for those who are the first responders. I ask that they may be given compassion and wisdom, and that they may be an extension of the care and healing that God brings. Then I pray for the families that are impacted because they are in crisis. May they know peace and find the help that they need. When we see the pictures of the devastation of bushfires and uh, at this time look at the floods that have uh, come and the uh, effects of the hurricanes in, uh, in America, and particularly in Florida, North Carolina, we can pray that 
there will be those who respond and those that will be helped and those that will be healed. We can also recognise that our forests can rejuvenate and regrow and that people can recover and as a result of that can act with goodness and grace. So we are those who respond with the goodness of grace and we remember that when we are caught up in a catastrophe, when we experience devastation, there are those who draw alongside us that God has not abandoned us. And if it is not our experience, then we are those who are called to be God's people and represent God in those situations. We worship now with uh, our offering and words will be on the screen it says oh god of mighty wind and flame and grace that we bring these our gifts and those that we transfer electronically in order that others might experience your love your compassion and know the help of others standing with them accept these offerings bless each gift and giver we pray in Jesus name Amen it's, uh, it's Peter here, over here at the drums. I invite you all to uh, remain seated as the band uh, plays a song. This is a song written um, a couple of years ago now. Um, this morning we've been focusing on uh, 
trees and, uh, and bushfires, etc. This isn't a bushfire song specifically. It's a song about a, a healing tree. Um, it's a song about uh, a, a tree which is uh, indicative to the uh, outback regions of Australia where the uh, Aboriginal people use the sap from this particular tree, the bloodwood tree, um, as bush medicine in the healing or the antiseptic on wounds um, uh, when they sustain them. So quite, a, quite an amazing story um, about the way that uh, they use uh, the blood from this tree, the bloodwood tree, to to uh, facilitate their healing. So this is uh, a song called Bloodwood. In this place of heat and dust, of sand and rock and space, there is a tree the bloodwood tree whose blood it heals through grace the ancient people to the tree have come their tired feet have trod and to the tree they bring their pain and they're healed through its blood bring your time Outback place of heat and heartache, we all can come to be born twice. So let the ancient desert spirits walk with us to this place, to Christ upon the bloodwood tree, bloodwood tree, tree of grace. So bring it time. And broken body and bring your rest less weary soul and sit beneath the tree of salvation to the bloodwood tree and be made whole.
to the bloodwood tree and be made whole. Jesus Christ, tune us to the deep mysteries of creation. Make our spirits sensitive to the forces of nature at work around us, the suffering of those who experience these forces in bushfires. Jesus Christ, make our hearts sensitive to the suffering of our King, cries of agony from the bush, forests and the mountains and the cities. Teach us to care. We come to you, our God, with so many things that claim our time, our energy, our resources, our very lives. And we're easily drawn away from serving you by the enticements of the world for wealth, ease and comfort. And just like so many, we are owned by our possessions and held captive by our treasures. You continue to offer us healing and hope. You seek to transform our lives from captivity to freedom and witness and service. And as we look at the world in which there is so much warfare and strife, anger and hatred, we can easily become overwhelmed by the needs and stresses. Help us to place our lives and our trust in you, knowing that with your help, many wonderful things can be accomplished which would provide hope and peace for others and for ourselves. Please give us the courage and strength to truly be your disciples. Loving God, we pray for the relief of those suffering from global poverty. We lift up to you, the people of Burundi, the Central African Republic, Haiti, Somalia, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Mozambique, whose gross domestic product per person is the lowest in the world. Our caring God, we pray for the safety of the 120 million women, men and children forced from their homes due to war, drought, political instability and economic insecurity. We pray especially for the people of Syria, Lebanon, Gaza, Israel, the Rohingya people forced from Myanmar, and we ask for a lasting peace between the leaders and peoples of Israel and Palestine, Lebanon and Iran. As we continue to grapple with the global climate crisis, Lord, may we act in solidarity for the protection of human life the animal kingdom, air, water, and the minerals that have all been created by you. Hear our prayer, for we pray in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Do we have photos of bushfires that are in the PowerPoint? been sent to Mandy. We'll just have a look at those before we come to our closing.
Christ calls you to be his disciples, to serve him with love and compassion, to serve earth by caring for creation, especially the land that God has given life so that we and all our kin may live. We will remember the bushlands. We will groan with all creatures. We will prepare for new bushfires. Will you care for creation? We will care for creation. We will learn from the forces of nature. We will prepare our planet for safe habitation. May the Spirit of God, who is above all and in all and through all, fill you with the knowledge of God's presence pulsing in the bushlands of earth and pulsing through Christ within you. Go in peace, serving Christ and loving earth. In peace, serving Christ. Thank you.